ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff, your favorite place to learn how to edit stuff. What kind of stuff? All kinds of stuff. One of you commented on a video and asked for a Stranger Things intro tutorial, and God damn it, we deliver here at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Now, let me preface this entire video with some assumptions that I think about the Stranger Things intro. Assumption one, I think that multiple people worked on this intro. Could it be done by one person? Absolutely. Would it take a tremendous amount of time? Absolutely. Are we gonna spend that kind of time today on this tutorial? Absolutely not. My second assumption, they probably used a lot of third-party plugins that probably cost a lot of money. Are we gonna do that today? Absolutely not. We're gonna be using all stock effects inside of After Effects, and I, Naughty and Sands, I'm gonna give you guys a preset that I have made inside of After Effects that will get you pretty close, something that I was just kind of tinkering with earlier today, and I will also show you guys a free plugin from Video Copilot called Saber, which will give you really, really interesting and cool results for this tutorial. It is very CPU intensive and GPU intensive and just very computer intensive in general, but it's really, really dope and it's free. So we're gonna get you guys off and running and off to a good start, hopefully pretty quick. So while this video is not going to be an exact replica of the Stranger Things intro, it is, however, going to be inspired by the Stranger Things intro. We're gonna be using Adobe After Effects today, all stock things inside of After Effects and a couple free plugins for you guys to check out and use at your own leisure. But for right now, open up Adobe After Effects, because we are getting started. All right, kids, After Effects is open, and the first thing we're gonna do is create a new composition. It's going to be 1920 by 1080 at 20 seconds long. Go ahead and click OK. The next thing I'm gonna want you to do is come right up here to the text tool, and down in your composition, you're gonna write the text of whatever you wanna animate in Stranger Things style. I'm gonna do edit stuff, obviously. And what I do recommend is finding a font that has some serifs on it, because if you go back and look at the Stranger Things intro, it is kind of a serif-y looking font. Anything that's a bubbly font or a block font isn't quite gonna look like the Stranger Things intro when you're done with it, so I recommend using something with a serif on it. Did you just learn what a serif was? We're just learning all sorts of stuff today. Let's keep going. All right, I'm gonna increase my font size just a little bit, and I'm going to increase the line spacing right over here under my character panel, and just make sure that it's looking real nice. And once I've got that done, I'm going to align it to the center of my composition, both horizontally and vertically, because we want this text to be right smack dab in the middle. Now, this next part is gonna piss a lot of people off, but I promise you it's gonna be worth it in the end. What I want you guys to do is right click on your text once you have it done, come right up here to create, and we are going to create masks from text, and that is going to create another layer above your text, and inside of that layer is gonna be a bunch of masks for all of the text that we have. Now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this as many times as there are letters in our sentence. And I decided to do a really long one today, which sucks for you, but let's just keep going. So I'm gonna assume that this first one is my first letter, which is E. So I'm gonna hold Control and D to duplicate. And I'm gonna say D-I-T-S-T-U-F-F. -F. So now I have as many layers as there are letters in my sentence. And then what I'm gonna do is come down here to my first E layer. I'm gonna click Enter, and I'm just gonna say E. And then I'm gonna click enter and say D and I and T and so on. And once you've properly labeled all of your layers, what I would recommend if you're using more than one word in a sentence, just highlight the parts of the first word that you wanna use and click on this little color and just change it to a different color so you're not gonna get yourself confused. Now here comes the fun and time consuming part. On your first layer, under E, I want you to click on that layer and hit M, which will bring up all of your masks. And I want you to delete everything other than the E out of all of the masks. And then for D, I want you to do the same thing. Click M on the keyboard and delete everything other than the D. You'll see that there are two layers here for the D because one is the outside mask and one is the inside mask. If you have a lot of letters that have dual purpose like that, you will need to keep both. So I'm gonna keep both Ds in there and I'm gonna delete the rest of them out of here. There you go, and keep on going, kids. All right, we're done. And what you want out of the end of this is each of your layers that is labeled each of your letters, you want that corresponding mask to be on that layer just by itself because we're gonna be animating all of these letters individually and we want them to eventually come together to make something that looks nice. And each one of these layers is going to represent a letter. I'm gonna highlight all my layers by hitting Control A on the keyboard and then just collapse them all just so we can get back to where we were, looking nice and pretty. And then what I want you guys to do is 
click on each individual layer and you're going to center the anchor point with your layer. Now I have mapped my keyboard shortcut to be Alt C on the keyboard and you'll see that the anchor point gets thrown right into the middle. The standard stock After Effects keyboard shortcut for this is Control Alt and Home. Or if you wanted to, you can come right up here to Layer go to transform and center anchor point in layer content. You can do that for each individual layer if you want, but for me, it's much easier to click on the layer and hit Alt C to center all of my anchor points in all of my layers. And now we are cooking with gas and we are ready to go. So now we get to start having a little bit of fun with animating all of these letters to kind of come together into a sentence like you're used to seeing in the Stranger Things intro. The harder part is over, now we get to have some fun. So now what I want you guys to do is start with your bottom most layer. We're gonna set a position keyframe right at the beginning of our composition. My keyboard shortcut for this is Alt P. Yours might be different, but set a position keyframe. And we're gonna come right over here. We're gonna make sure to surpass five seconds every time we do an animation. And we're just gonna randomly throw another keyframe down here, let's say eight seconds. And what I'm gonna do now is go back to the very beginning of my composition to my first keyframe. And I'm just gonna pull this E off to the left because over the course of eight seconds, what I want to happen is I want this E to slowly drift in and then eventually settle right here at about eight seconds. And we're gonna do this for every single letter in our composition. And if you guys wanna leave some where they are, that's totally fine. Like for example, I'm gonna leave the D right where it is. And I'm just gonna go over here to I, and I'm gonna set a position keyframe at the front. And now maybe for this one, I'm gonna go to nine seconds set a position keyframe, go back to my first, and now I will just raise this up just like that. Set a position keyframe for the T, maybe we'll go to seven seconds on this guy, set another position keyframe, go to the front, and I'm gonna pull this guy off to the right. So now over the course of time, all of these letters are slowly starting to come together like you see in the Stranger Things intro. We are just animating the text individually before we start doing our effects. So you guys can do this however you want. Really, honestly, play with it. You can kind of see how the letters are coming together, but you guys, I want you to do your own thing. Don't just copy me exactly what I'm doing. I want you to learn the steps of the process to do this yourself. So go off, have fun with your positioning and all of your letters, and meet me back here when you're done. All right, congratulations, you've gone off and done your own text animations, and this is what I ended up coming up with, a nice little conjunction of all of the letters of edit stuff just kind of coming together really nicely. Once you've gotten to this point, guys, what I want you to do is click on the last keyframe in your animation sequence. You should only have two, one at the beginning, one at the end. Right click on that and change this to easy ease, or you can hit F9 on your keyboard, and you're gonna do that for every last keyframe of your animation. And once you've done that, grab your first layer over here, control A on the keyboard and just collapse all of this just so we can see what we're working on really nice and neatly. And then what I want you guys to do is come right up here to this little 3D box, which is gonna make all of these layers 3D. And I want you just to click on it and drag all the way to the bottom to make all of these text layers 3D. Then once you've done that, you're gonna come right up here to layer new camera. And we are going to put a default After Effects camera right in our scene. We're gonna to come to the very beginning of our sequence. We are going to set a position keyframe for the camera and then we are going to come all the way down here to maybe 16 seconds and we are going to set another position keyframe for the camera. Now, once you've set your two position keyframes, what I want you guys to do is switch this from one view to two views horizontal, come all the way over to the very beginning of our composition, make sure your camera layer is selected, grab it by the Z axis right here on the left hand side and just push this all the way forward right up so your text is gigantic in your right hand view monitor. And what that has just done is taken our camera and set a position keyframe at the very front of our composition here. And over the course of time, this camera is now going to pull out and it will reveal edit stuff. And you can kind of see that all of the animations that we've done with our text are happening while the camera is pulling back. And we've just made leaps and bounds in about 30 seconds for this animation. Truly amazing stuff. We are really cooking with gas here, but we are not done yet. What I want you guys to do is come right up here to layer new solid, and we are gonna create a new solid. We'll make it white, sure, why not? And grab your rectangular mask tool. And what we're gonna do is just create a nice little rectangular mask, just like so, right above our text. I'm going to hit control R on the keyboard for a ruler, and I'm going to grab a ruler and just kind of line it up with the outside of my widest text layer, just like that. And now I'm going to line up this mask kind of with the width of my text, just like so. And once you guys have done that, go ahead and make that layer 3D as well. And now with that layer 3D, it will follow the movement of our camera. So once your text is kind of settled into place, 
What I want you guys to do is find a really nice time in here that we are going to make this rectangular layer, which is looking a little bit thick, so I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit. We're gonna animate this layer to kind of come out from the center. So what I'm gonna do on that layer is come right down here to my mask. I'm going to set a keyframe for mask path, and I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 keyframes, let's call it that. Set another position keyframe, go back to our first keyframe, and now I'm going to grab each side of this mask by clicking, hitting shift, and then clicking again right underneath. And I'm just gonna click and drag and hold shift at the same time, right to the center of this layer so that it will animate out from the center. And on my first keyframe, I'm just gonna trim this layer back so that it starts right where the animation starts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we should have a nice little animated line that is coming out over the top of our text. And I will kind of move it down a little bit closer to the text. I will also duplicate that layer and I will bring the duplicate down underneath the bottom of the text here. So now we are framing our text with those lines like you see in the Stranger Things intro. Get rid of our lines, just kind of pull them back over to the side. And now our text is settled, it is still pulling backwards, and now we have these nice animated lines that come out from the center. Now I can take those keyframes and I can just kind of move them over to make the animation of that just a little bit longer so it's not so aggressive, and we are looking pretty good right now. Collapse all of my layers, put my camera layer on the top just to keep things nice and neat and tidy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start adding effects to our text to make it more Stranger Things looking. Now, in the video description below, you will find two things. Thing number one is a link to a preset that I made inside of After Effects for you guys that you can just drag and drop straight onto your text and kind of be off to the races and getting there pretty quickly. And thing two is a link to Video Copilot's Saber plugin. I will demo that very, very quickly in this video today. Today. It is very intensive, it is very cool, but this isn't a Saber tutorial, this is a Stranger Things intro inspired tutorial. So let's just keep going using the preset that I've made for you guys. So once you've dropped my preset into your user presets folder inside of After Effects, all you're gonna do is take Stranger Things V1 and start dropping it on each individual layer that exists down here on your timeline. And I'm just gonna click and drag and click and drag and you can see that over the course of time, this is starting to change into something really cool and really Stranger Things inspired. And we are just gonna keep dragging and keep dropping until we are done, which is right now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have kind of created this nice animation moving with text and our little lines and everything in the style of Stranger Things. And you have just used my preset to just drop onto your text. And if you were to come into any one of your text layers, you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing in my preset. So we'll kind of come over to the D right here and I will turn them on individually so you can see exactly what's happening here. We are applying a red stroke to our text. We are then texturizing that stroke a little bit with some sheen and a little bit of contrast and brightness on the sides. We are adding some fractal noise in there. We are now making it glow, which is really bringing out some of the fractal noise kind of cloudiness around the outside. We are blurring it just slightly and adding a little bit more fractal noise, which you'll see it's adding a little bit of artifacts in that cloudiness of the glow and it's making it look pretty decent. All right, so now if I go ahead and play this. Swing! Anyway, you get the point. We have just made a really cool Stranger Things inspired text animation. We did it together. It was really awesome. You are using my preset to kind of get you off and running to the races immediately. Now guys, you can spend a lot of time in After Effects just kind of going in and manipulating and really adding more noise, adding more glow, adding all these little elements that will get you farther, but you're gonna take a little bit more time. But for this tutorial, all I wanted to do is basically show you the ingredients that you're gonna use to cook this with, and then you guys go off to the races and you cook it yourself. I realize I say off to the races a lot. It's a really good descriptive phrase. I'm not gonna apologize. So we've done a really awesome thing using my preset here, but if you guys wanted to use the Video Copilot Saber plugin, I will just delete my preset right off of the U here so we can just focus on our U and we can see what the Saber will do in relation to all the other stuff around it. But I'm going to go ahead and drop Video Copilot Saber right on that U layer. And there's a couple things that you guys will have to do in order to get it to go around the mask that we've already created. First things first is come over here to Customize Core. You will then change this from Saber to layer masks and it will automatically default onto your layer mask. Then you're gonna come right down here to your render settings and change this from composite from black 
to transparent so you can see all of the other stuff around it. Then what I recommend doing is just coming right up here to the Saber preset, switching it to thin, then coming up here and changing your color to red, and that will kind of get you somewhere in the ballpark of what we were already doing already. Turn the intensity down a little bit, maybe turn the glow spread up or the glow bias. And now you can kind of see that we are getting a really super neon version of this Stranger Things logo inspired thing with Saber. And you guys can come in here and you can do some really, really awesome things. If you come into your distortion settings and go to glow distortion, you can change this. I'm gonna just increase the size of this. Actually, I'm gonna solo this layer so we don't have to deal with any of this other stuff. I'm gonna change my glow distortion and I'm gonna increase the glow distortion and change this from smoke to fluid. And you can kind of see that we're doing some really, really awesome stuff in here and that fluid will move. It will kind of like cycle through and you can get some really, really unique and interesting textures out of Saber just by messing with all of these settings. And this isn't a Saber tutorial. I recommend going and looking at some Saber tutorials that are on YouTube. There are plenty of them, but this is a Stranger Things inspired intro tutorial. And I think that we've done a pretty good job in the amount of time that we've done this and I'm not wearing a watch but this is to indicate that we didn't take much time to do this to you you know you know the you know the drill so just a little recap of the stranger things inspired tutorial you guys dropped some text onto your timeline then you created layer masks from all of that text and then you did the really time-consuming thing of segmenting out each individual letter in your sentence into its own layer and layer mask and then what we did was we animated all of those layers to kind of come together over time we added a 3d camera pulled back from that text to create the kind of animation coming in while drifting out with the camera and then you guys applied my stranger things preset to all of the layers and you got something really cool or what you're doing right now is you're really tinkering with the preset that i've given you and you're making it even better and even cooler that about does it today for me guys i really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial a little bit on the long side but we did something really cool by creating a stranger things inspired intro for you guys to go off and do your own whatever you guys do when I'm not around. Anyway, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. This video was inspired by a comment that one of you guys left for a Stranger Things intro tutorial. So leave a comment in the comment section below. Reach out to me on social at Naughty and Sands. If you aren't following me already, subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.